Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now the USS Enterprise from Discovery is not the only model kit that Round 2 has put out in recent weeks. The other one is the Reliant from the Wrath of Khan. And now this is actually a companion piece to the refit Enterprise they put out last fall. So this snap together kit was put out last fall and the USS Reliant goes with it. In fact, these two are so much of a set that the Aztec decals for these two kits are sold together. So you can buy the Enterprise, you can buy the Reliant, and you can buy one set of Aztecs for... We built up the Refit Enterprise last year. And it's a good-looking model, fully aztec -ed. So we're going to build up the Reliant to go with it. Let's take a look at the box. So we've got a great shot of the Reliant. Uh, we get a couple other parts of the model. And they show a black dome here on the box. We'll look at that in a moment. We'll also look at the decals in a moment. But what I like about these packages is they have a quote from the commanding officer for each ship on each box. So here you get Khan's quote about revenge being served cold in space. And that's really a wonderful compliment to the quote they gave Kirk. Khan! I think that Khan probably has the winning quote on the box compared to Kirk. All right, the inside of the box has the paint callout and the decal placement guide. And the first thing you're gonna notice, there are a lot of decal callouts for this model. Let's, let's take a look at the decal sheet. Yeah, even before you get to all of these really nice uh, battle damage decals, and man, you've got a lot of those. A lot of battle damage. Before you even get to those, um, there's a ton of decals on here. So there's window decals for the entire ship. There's decals for all the thrusters, all the phaser banks. Uh, you get the name in the registry. Sensor bands around the edge. You get the bridge stripes. Uh, you get the shuttle bays. There are a lot of decals on here even without the Aztec. This looks like a lot more decals than was in the last release. And here's something I haven't seen in a round two kit. So there's a white dome base in this. Um, most of the time you get a black base. Uh, for this one, it's done in the same color plastic as the Reliant. The plastic itself is the same as we've come to expect. We get clear parts for the phasers, clear parts for the impulse engines. The impulse crystal, both top and bottom, are done in clear. And the inside of the warp grills are done in clear as well. The kit plastic is just a very slight ivory color. Um, so we will want to paint that white. The detail looks good, and, and it should. This is a kit that has been put out uh, just in the past couple of years, engineered and designed. Some nice detail on these kind of ridged areas. And while they don't give us any molded windows, uh, there is still a lot of detail and nicely done grid lines on this ship. So let's go through this build process. The first thing I'm doing is I'm painting some of the parts that can just be snapped on later. Uh, so we're doing things like painting the impulse engines red, the warp deflectors blue, uh, the little crystals that sit on top and the bottom of the ship, and the nacelle grills along the outside, we're spraying those with a nice blue. Uh, now, not the entire outside is supposed to be blue, just the grooves, just the inside grooves of these clear plastic parts are supposed to be blue. 
So I've got a real easy way to deal with that that I'm going to show you in this video, but we start with the outside going blue. Here's a couple other snap-on parts, uh, the little accent parts on the front of the warp nacelles. We're taking those to kind of a goldish copper color, or we're just going to be able to snap that on in a little bit. Um, also, these front intakes for the warp nacelles, we're starting off taking those to black. Uh, these are the parts on the front of the warp nacelle that are black with a white cross dividing them. And once again, I've got a real easy way that we're going to do that as well. The photon torpedo assembly is getting sprayed black. And once again, if we do these parts kind of separately, we won't need to mask them off later in the build process. Now the back of these warp grills, we're painting the backs black. Um, overall, we want the entire piece to look kind of gunmetalish or a dusty black. So we're doing the back in black and starting off with the front being in blue. Now here's the trick. We're going to wet sand this. We're going to wet sand this with 600 grit sandpaper to take the blue off the front and leave the blue only in the recessed grooves. This is a really easy way just to leave paint inside a groove uh, when you have to do that. Um, the parts that we're sanding off are going to be a little bit dusty, but they're going to show the black that's on the other side of the clear part. It's going to leave us with most of the warp grill in a nice dusty black that's a little bit more like gunmetal and just leave the blue inside those grills. It's a part, it's something that probably nobody's really going to see, but I'm going to know it's there. I'm going to know that that clear part is done with blue just in those recessed lines. And it's going to be a detail that really matters to me. Uh, but hopefully you guys saw that was nice, simple, and easy. Now it's time to start our main assembly. So we're taking parts off the sprue with our clippers. And whenever you're taking parts off the sprue, use clippers, don't just bend them off or pull them off. And then you can clean off the little bit of nubs that are left over with something like a nice needle file. So just clean off those bottoms. And this is a snap together kit. So all the parts have nice little parts that they snap into. They're held in place by friction, but we're still going to use glue on this build. So it fits nicely, and it's going to get sandwiched between the top and the bottom halves of the saucer. Um, but we still want it to be held in place by glue. Uh, that's really going to stop any cracks from showing up. It's going to be easier to paint, and overall it's going to look a little bit better. So we're just going to put a little bead of glue along all of the joints, and capillary action is really going to wick that extra thin Tamiya cement inside all the grooves. It's going to melt the plastic together and it's going to hold it really tightly. We're going to go just corner by corner. We glued and clamped this side. Once that's dry, we'll move on to another corner. There's a couple snap-on parts here that we're going to do the same thing with. Uh, the bridge snaps on very easily, so we're going to let that snap in place. And once it's in place, being held in by that friction, we're once again go through with our glue and just lay a tiny bit of glue around the edges that's going to melt those pieces together. And we're doing this all before we paint so that it's held nice and tight. Now here's the other trick I really want to show you. It's very, very easy to do these front intakes for the warp nacelle. We did it all in black and now we're using our needle file. Uh, just to remove the black on those outsized raised edges. And you just want to go uh, nice, carefully, and slow, um, but just use that needle file lightly across the top just to remove the paint. And that's going to remove it just on the outside raised edges and will give you that nice cross dividing the black sections of that warp intake. Quick easy, simple, and it looks good. It's a good look at the end of the project. Now that we have so many things snapped in place, it's time to start laying down our base coat. White's a color that you have to do several different coats. It's not really going to show up the first time around, so you're just going to layer it. Just a handful different coats of white over white giving it a good amount of time to dry in between. This is probably my third or fourth coat 
here of white. And you can see now we are getting some good coverage. It's starting to look a little less like plastic and more like a ship now that it has a good solid finish of paint on it. Now that we get down to the warp nacelles, I'm only going to paint the first inch or so of these. I'm only going to paint the part that goes up against that black intake grill. Uh, I'm going to leave kind of the last four or five inches unpainted so I can really glue them well. But I'm painting the front so that when I snap that black part in place, I won't need to worry about repainting that white later. All right, now we can start some assembly since we have a lot of parts pre-painted. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna snap these two pylon halves together. Uh, they are snapped to fit like always. So you just have to press them together until they're held together well. Now we're gonna take that black intake and we're gonna sandwich it in between the two warp nacelle halves. So just get it firmly in place. We're gonna seat the pylon on the other half. It just has two little feet that fit into a slot on the other half of the nacelle. Make sure it's pressed in well and attach the two halves. Once again, just kind of going from front to back, pressing it solidly so those pins hold things together. And luckily we've left most of this unpainted uh, so that we'll be able to glue it very easily. Just a little bit of that thin, extra thin cement just along those joints and the plastic will just melt together to make a really seamless joint. All right, now we can put a little bit of masking tape over that black grill. Once again, the, the warp nacelle is already sprayed white around it, so I don't need to paint that again. This is just to protect it from overspray. And now we can paint the rest of this nacelle a nice white. That front intake won't need any complicated masking. It already looks great. The rest of this nacelle needs to go to white so that we can start doing some other little bit of detail painting on it. Um, but a really simple way to get that warp grill looking well without having to hand paint it or do a complicated piece of masking. We can also start spraying the top half of the saucer now that we've flipped it over. And same thing as before, it's just going to take several different coats of paint. Now here's a few parts that you do have to mask off. This is the outer grill of the warp nacelle, and it's just a gun metal. It's just a deep gray. The top of the saucer has these kind of uh, semi-mechanical areas uh, that we're gonna go with silver. You can also do a light gray here as well, but just add a little part to mask off and do a little bit of airbrushing. Now it's time to work on the photon torpedo assembly and just like the warp nacelle um, that black part get that black first do a little bit of white paint on the parts that are going to surround it so you don't need to mask that off later and then you're just going to start assembling uh, just like we have before now these little wings that come off I've left those unpainted so that I can glue them well um, they snap in place and then you're just going to snap the two halves of the photon torpedo assembly together, um, sandwiching those black parts together well. We've just dripped a drop of red paint into the rectangular holds on each of those so they get a little bit of red on them. Now we can airbrush white on all the parts that we had left unpainted. Uh, just going over the top like this, we won't get any white paint on that black uh, photon torpedo launcher. There's a little bit of blue, or it may also be a green accent. Um, I'm doing this on blue just to have some continuity with my refit. Um, and we'll do a little bit of this by hand painting it on. Uh, there are some nice lines you can kind of follow here uh, so that it's pretty easy to hand paint it. And some of it, uh, we're gonna airbrush. Uh, just kind of following the box art, it looks like a handful of these sections should be blue and a few of them should be silver. So we're laying down the blue first and we'll do a little bit of silver accent on it afterwards. Now we can go back to those parts we painted at the very beginning and snap them into place. So these are those warp crystals that we spray painted clear blue in the very beginning. 
on the top and on the bottom. And those impulse engines that we sprayed red, we get to snap those in place as well. We get to finally snap on our inside warp grills, which are now nicely black with blue recessed lines. And we get to snap on those copper gold colored accent pieces on the front of the warp nacelle. And I really do like how those look, especially with that little bit of hand painted blue right beside it. Here's a look at the other side, snapping that part in place as well. And hopefully you'll be able to see that we do have that really great effect of the blue recessed lines. And it wasn't hard to do. All right, now it's time to glue the pylon assemblies on. I'm using that Tamiya Thin Cement, and if you look closely, you'll be able to see it has actually melted away some of the paint. So it's always better to glue with an unpainted surface, but this will melt away your paint so that it will glue plastic to plastic. And it is a snap kit, so you can have to press hard and get these snapped in place. And then you just have to know that the glue is there underneath it, really providing some strength beyond that snap fit. The roll bar for the photon torpedoes just sits on top. And then the two halves of the roll bar are held together right at this barrel shape for the phaser torpedoes. And they get held together by these end caps that you snap on the front and the back of the barrel. So I did a lot to Maya glue on the inside of those little end caps, pushed them together and held them tightly. So here you can see our nice white ship. You can see all the little accent colors we've added throughout the ship, sometimes with snap-on parts, sometimes by masking. Um, but overall, we're about ready for decals. We have all of our little detail paint accomplished. So next step, Aztec decals. Now the Aztec decals, there are separate products that you can buy and they have the wallpaper decals uh, for the Reliant and the USS Enterprise. And if you've worked with decals at all before, Aztec decals won't be a hard thing for you. But they really provide that really nice texture that a lot of these Starfleet ships are known for having. The really detailed um, panel lining. So like always, we're going to start off by letting our decals uh, soak in the water for a little bit and then sit out to loosen off their decal paper. We'll give them all about 30 seconds to a minute of being wet, and they should slide off pretty easily. Once they've had some time to loosen, you're going to wet the area you're going to be applying them to. and then just slowly see if they'll easily slide off the decal paper. So you get a little bit of an edge off. Line that edge up with where you want it on the model and let slide the rest of the way. You will be able to do a little bit of positioning as long as you have that nice and wet. Once you have it exactly where you want it, you can use something like a Q-tip just to wick away any of the water and make sure it's sticking where you want it. Now, one thing I find is once you really get that super detailed hull plating and it really covers the entirety of the nacelle, um, it does a great job covering the saucer, covering the pylons, the roll bars. Uh, there's a few areas uh, that end up looking a little bit naked. So kind of these areas back here on the bottom of the saucer don't have any Aztec decals and the back of the shuttle bay doesn't get any. Uh, so it can always look a little bit different than the rest of the ship. Now you're going to get some decals for the shuttle bay parts, um, but we'd better paint these little triangle parts, see what we can do to add a little bit of detail there. Down here on the bottom where there's no aztec pattern, um, I'm going to use a light gray pin wash to bring out the detail there. I've already done that a little bit up here where there wasn't any um, decals. And just that little bit of a light gray wash uh, just adds a little bit of shadow and detail uh, so it doesn't seem so bare. 
So what we're going to do next is the kit decals. And I might actually be more intimidated by the kit decals than I was by the Aztec decals. Um, just a ton of little details here. A uh, little bit smaller pieces to place. A little bit, even a little bit harder to cut out. Um, but that's what we're going to do next. We're going to put on the kit decals and then we'll have a completed ship. So yes, the decals are an endeavor but I really think it's worth it. Uh, it took me about two days. I did uh, about four, maybe five different sessions of just doing a few decals at a time, um, letting everything dry. And there are just a ton of decals. Uh, everything from these thrusters, the phaser bumps, all of this red striping, different insignias. Man, Starfleet likes to put their pendants on everything, don't they? We've got Starfleet pendant here, 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 here. You've got it here. You've got it back here on this pylon. Yeah, they like to put the name of the ship just about everywhere. But these decals really do add to the model. I mean, you have just a ton of detail with these little caution stripes here on the phaser cannons. You get all the windows. You get the windows across the front of this saucer. You get the sensor band wrapping all the way around the saucer. You get all of these little dotted lines that go up and down the pylons. You get the dotted line that goes across the back of the roll bar here. Uh, we get this, the shuttle bay decals there. More red stripes. There were a lot of little red stripes on this model. Uh, you'll be able to see there's some red striping uh, back here. A couple of extra, I believe, phaser bumps down here underneath. So yeah, really a lot of decals. Uh, the red stripes were probably the hardest. The red stripes right in here uh, were probably the most difficult ones for me to do. Um, I think they turned out all right in the end. Now, I still have a handful of decals left that I couldn't quite figure out where they go. I'm pretty sure that this number one and number two, I'm pretty sure that's for the shuttle bay if you decide not to use their decal. Like if you decide to do it clear instead of blue, you can use those. I'm pretty sure that this 11... 17 and 17. I'm pretty sure they're going to go on the underside of this torpedo tube so that if on the underside you'd have 17, 17 and this v-shaped one on the bottom side. So I'm pretty sure that's this decal, this decal, and this decal. Um, so really these are a mystery to me. This last reliant name is a mystery to me and this last V-shaped one, I'm not sure of. Um, these, I know where these go. Um, I just haven't managed to get the wherewithal to get those on. Um, they actually wrap around the outside of this cylinder shape there. Um, still have a little bit of microsol to go on this part to get rid of kind of those last wrinkles and bubbles. But yes, this is the USS Reliant fully Aztec decaled and decaled with the kit decals. It is a good looking, very, very detailed ship. Um, now this is the Wrath of Khan edition. So we still have one more set of decals to go and that's gonna be the battle damage decals. So they give you a lot of different pieces and decals for battle damage, but they'll call some out specifically for specific parts on these ships. Uh, so they call out these five pieces uh, to be the battle damage that goes across the roll bar on the Reliant. Now, like all decals, you soak them in water. These are taking about 15 seconds in, in the water and probably about another 15 seconds out on a paper towel uh, to really come off the paper well. And these decals are really fantastic. They're strong, they're sturdy, and they really wrap around curves well. Uh, like this one that goes across the top, uh, you can just see it kind of fall down and wrap itself around the sides of that protrusion. We're going to use a little bit of a wet brush just to brush it up against the side of that. Uh, but it really does wrap well and adhere well. Now, 
we always kind of go alternating decals so we want to let these decals really set and be steady and sturdy before we go back and do the decals in between them uh, so right now they're fairly positionable um, if they're not just add a little bit more water underneath them and they should be able to slide until you um, really have them exactly where you want them now I'm really glad to put this one on because I've got a little bit of a crack in the gray decal underneath it, so it'll be good to cover that up with a little bit of battle damage. And then we're gonna move on to the parts on the other side, uh, but these decals are really kind of fun to work with. They work incredibly well and they're highly detailed. Now once those are very well set, we can come back in and position the decals that go in between them. I really like this effect of kind of layering these decals together. Now you can't see it, there's another three pieces of decal underneath the roll bar uh, that you've layered together to make a long phaser burn across it. Now here's how strong these decals are. You can see I can pick an entire decal off the paper and position it. They are strong, they're sturdy. So you definitely wanna go after them with Microsol after that to get them to lay flat. I wanna say thank you to everybody who stuck with me on this video. I started off thinking, hey, this is just a snap kit. I can show the entire build process between gluing things and painting things and all the decaling. And here we are, a video that is 30 minutes long. And the way this kit builds up is a lot like that. You think you're starting off just doing a snap kit and you're gonna snap it together and be done. Uh, but then there's just so much to do. Um, hand painting those yellow caution triangles, uh, trying to get these warpness cells looking right around the back, uh, hand painting these fantails, uh, hand painting these accents along the front and underneath this copper, uh, painting those separate copper pieces. There's hand painting the blue here and here and even the blue up here. Um, there's so much to be done on this kit. And then it's really, if you're looking at this, it is exceptionally well detailed and it's just layering decal upon decal. It's layering the Aztec decals, getting them to fit, uh, the wonderful marking decals that are provided. Um, and then even layering the battle damage. There's just so much to be done on this kit. It really kind of surprises you. Out of nowhere, you turn out to be several days into the project and kind of doing more than you ever thought you'd be doing on a little snap kit. Uh, but really, absolutely some fantastic detail in the hull plating, in the battle damage, and hopefully in the little things that you got to paint yourself. Really a fantastic kit. And and a kit that there's a surprising amount to be done on it. So thank you guys for sticking with me on this build video. Um, I hope it was worth it. I hope you guys kind of enjoyed seeing the complete process rather than just a review. And I hope you kind of like what I did with the model kit. Um, now, we're going to do one more video. It'll be a short one where we're going to do a final wrap-up on this series, the Reliant and the USS Enterprise. So stay tuned to the channel for that. But once again, look for this model kit on your hobby shop shelves now. And thank you for following the channel.